from the Upper Hall of St. Paul the Apostle Church. My name is Ferdy Fanek. I would like to invite you to visit the Maltese Canadian Museum. Here is with me is the pastor of St. Paul the Apostle Church, Father Mario McAuliffe, MSSP, explaining about this museum. Following Father Mario Chevalier de Chacombo, KOSJ, that he is the curator of this museum. With this video, we'd like to welcome you all here at the Museum of St. Paul the Apostle Parish in Toronto, Canada. This is a Maltese Canadian parish, and as you know, history is a very important aspect of the people of Malta. Those of you who have been to Malta, even if you're not Maltese, would immediately realize how much important our sense of history is. It's a long history, it's a long tradition, and we cherish our traditions, we cherish our history. Just think, for example, that when Columbus discovered America, uh, in Malta there were already some of the churches we are, which we are still using today, that date back to hundreds of years ago. The temples, Neolithic temples, which we have in Malta date before even the temples in England, the megalithic temples there. So history is part of our nature, it's in our blood. And when Maltese people started emigrating from Malta, going to other countries, to North Africa, Australia, America, and here in Canada, they took with them part of this history. They took with them a lot of traditions which they inherited from previous generations. And for us, it is important that all this is not lost. So here in this museum, as you will see later on, we have a lot of things, a lot of artifacts that, first of all, some of them are things that people brought with them from Malta, and they are of rich historical values. And we have a lot of other things which tell us the story, the history of this place here. St. Paul the Apostle Church is the only Maltese parish in the north of America, uh, in America and here in Canada. People have given their time, their energy to build this place, not just the building, but even as a community. And there is a rich history which we would like to keep and to cherish. It would be a pity if this history would be lost. So here is that history. We shall see later on many things which are part of this history which has helped us to be what we are and who we are today. So once more, I welcome you here at St. Paul's Museum and as the guides will give you the tour of this place, will explain more about the artifacts we have here We've got a beautiful team here of volunteers. It's important to notice that, uh, to emphasize the fact that the people who work here, who would like to look after this place, they are all volunteers. They do it out of love for the community and for history. Uh, it's a beautiful team led by Richard Kumbo, and they will be explaining to you better all the things that we have here. Enjoy the show. This wall exhibits various pictures of the early Maltese community and uh, the many clubs that were here once. It also exhibits the um, information that the migrants had to go through in order to emigrate to Canada. The majority of the migrants came here after the Second World War. If you've noticed a lot of trophies in the museum, the trophies had belonged to the various Maltese clubs. At one time, in the junction along Dundas, there were nine Maltese clubs. Sadly, all that's left are these trophies that we happened to get because in the mid-80s, three of them had joined the Maltese Canadian Society, so they were in their possession in 1934, when Toronto was celebrating its centennial, 
The Maltese Canadian Society of Toronto organized a float and it won first prize in the Centennial Parade and this is the trophy and by coincidence in 1984 when Toronto celebrated its sesquicentennial, the Melita Soccer Club won first prize. As uh, Father Mario McAuliffe, our chairperson, mentioned, uh, this museum was started in the mid-1980s. But before I mention that, while I was in Malta in 2019, my volunteers here, Rose Kassar, Manny Mipsut and Debbie Lightfoot, Debbie Lightfoot I know, and Mike Gavoya surprised me with this beautiful Miss Malta exhibit that you see behind me. The Maltese Canadian Society of Toronto, one of its main events, held the annual Miss Malta pageant from 1967 until 2007. The cape was donated by um, the late Nick Police. It actually has real ermine, the fur. The crown is um, plated in gold. And every year, a Miss Malta trophy was uh, presented to the winner, as well as having a trophy that we kept at the club that was donated by Magneto Electric. And, uh, grandfather of the company was one of the founders of the Maltese Canadian Society.
1971, many band members of the society's band decided that they want to um, form their own organization. And they left the, the Maltese Canadian Society and they formed the very now popular Malta Band Club. And the Malta Band Club, in a way, is a, a remnant of what the society was. The Malta Band Club has been, has been very successful in many of its activities. They have many dedicated members, like the Molito Soccer Club, and they've done very well. Amongst the uh, volunteers I introduced to you earlier, there's three that are uh, not present with us today. Um, Carmen Gallia, Marches Fennec, and Rita Kenny. And now I would like to introduce one of our dedicated volunteers, Mr. Manny Mifsud, who will speak uh, about his museum experience. Hello, I'm Manny Mifsud. I am a volunteer here at the uh, Canadian, Maltese Canadian Museum. I uh, have been uh, volunteering here since 2018, January, when the committee was set up um, with the great encouragement of uh, Richard Pumbo and Father Maria McCullough. Uh, it's been a great experience coming here uh, once or twice a week uh, for a few hours and uh, get everything in, in place. We managed to get uh, donations of uh, stands and cabinets to uh, do a, a decent placement of, of, of the uh, artifacts that have been collected here over the years. Uh, it's been quite a good experience. I've learned a lot about Maltese, Maltese culture. Uh, I am Maltese, so I, I think it has that I should learn something about our, our country's background. Um, it's been a, quite an experience, and I hope to continue here as much as possible. Thank you. The museum originally began as a collection of uh, church artifacts. Um, Father Raymond Falzon, the Franciscan friar, was the, the initiator of the collection. And as time progressed, more people donated different artifacts, documents, pictures, etc. And then on January 29th, 2017, Father Manuel Parnis decided that the museum should be open to the general public. And on that date, we opened the museum. And uh, since then, various groups have held meetings here. We've done tours. And hopefully, when things calm down after COVID leaves, we'll reopen properly again. Yes, my name is Rose, and I am Maltese. I've been living in Canada for 72 years. I enjoy coming to the museum to see all these old pictures and certain exhibits that, have, that, that, that I miss from Malta. The museum is free to come, but we do accept donations, and also any donations of something that you think would be an asset to the museum. Thank you. Hi, my name is Debbie Lightfoot, and I'm from Toronto. I'm not Maltese. I've lived here in the community since 1984. I've been involved in various committees and helping out in all that time, and most recently in the museum for the last couple of years, and I've really enjoyed working with Richard and the members here. And uh, once the museum is up and running, you should all come all out. And, uh, it's a great place to see all the artifacts. Hello, my name is Michael Gouveia. I'm not Maltese, I'm Portuguese. Um, I enjoy working with um, these very nice people. And I enjoy the culture and history of Malta. Thank you. The showcases you see in the museum here were donated by the uh, Midmet Bank, which unfortunately no longer exists. It was a Maltese, um, a Maltese owned bank, and the Bank of Valletta. Um, Father Andrew Kushkiri, Franciscan father, had donated coins from the Roman era uh, the nights, during the time of the Knights of Malta time of the French and the British in Malta. And his collection is very much appreciated and prized here in the museum. One of our many benefactors 
has been the artist of the Republic of Malta, um, Consul General Dr. Raymond Sherry, who found sponsors who provided us with um, a new mannequin, the filing cabinet, display case, and uh, assorted stationaries, which we greatly appreciated. This memorial tablet was erected uh, when the new church was finished in 1956. It lists the benefactors and the Maltese Canadian Society, the only club at the time when the original church was built, started in 1930 and completed in 1931. I hope that you enjoyed the tour of this museum. I would like to thank Chevalier de Chacombo for inviting me to do this program. Also to Father Mario Mikalev.